Hello everybody, Gliderman here. So today we're going to be taking a look at all the snapping things in Blender, and which can be pretty useful for uh, mesh creating. So uh, here we've just got our basic scene. Uh, this is the scene that it loads up with by default. Uh, let's just duplicate this cube. Uh, so we'll just do Shift D. So you can see that we're moving this uh, around and it kind of appears to be on a single plane. And so I believe that is based off of the origin of that object. And basically, uh, from the plane projected from this viewport, which you can see is, you know, a rectangle. Imagine pushing that plane forward and forward and forward until it hits uh, the origin of this object. And then we're moving it around uh, on that plane. So uh, you can also see that it's not really snapping at all. So we can move it around uh, freely and you can see uh, the down in this corner here, you can see all of the values changing quite rapidly uh, as I'm dragging it around. So let's just press escape for now and we'll jump into the first bit of snapping. So you can just click this uh, magnet right here or you can do shift tab, shift tab will toggle that. And by default, it will be set to increment mode, which if we just press G to grab this, you can see it's snapping uh, right along basically the size of that blender grid. So I can try to drag it like along the x-axis. You know what, let's just lock it to the x-axis by pressing X. And you can see it's snapping by one unit. And you can also see it uh, noted down here uh, with the change is noted uh, along that. So let's just press escape again. I've snapped into front view, and if you're curious how it automatically toggles between perspective and orthographic, just go to File, User Preferences, if we just drag this down, and I think that's Interface, and then Auto Perspective. If you enable that checkbox and then, you know, save your user settings so that it remembers that, uh, basically when you orbit with the middle mouse, it'll snap to perspective. And if you tap one of the numpad keys, uh, it will automatically snap into ortho. I found this to be a pretty big time saver, so you don't need to do uh, like side view and then press five and then toggle back and forth and back and forth. Instead, it just automatically does that for you. So anyway, let's go in front view. And you can also see if we zoom in, we get the smaller grid. And then if we zoom in even further, we get an even smaller grid. So let's just zoom in. Uh, so that we can see this first grid here. So if we just drag along this, you can see we're moving along uh, that smaller increment, even though if we drag that out or orbit out, you can see it's actually just a small portion of that. And if we zoom in uh, even further, we can grab on the X and move it that small increment. And it doesn't look like we can zoom in any further than that. But uh, that's just an example of being able to snap to the grid. So you don't need to specifically type in a specific number. However, that can possibly make things not look as completely organic because it would be rigidly locked to a specific uh, location. However, I believe if we just do uh, G and then let's just say X and we hold control, uh, you can see it's moving smoothly again. And then if I let go of control, it's uh, jumping and stuff like that. And same applies for the reverse. So if we just disable uh, the snap, and I press G and then let's just say X, you can see it's moving smoothly. And then if I hold control, you can see it begins to snap. And that can be pretty useful for quickly toggling back and forth for something that you want uh, quickly set up. So uh, now we've got that there, and we'll move on to the next type of snapping, the vertex snapping. And you can see there's a number of different things that we can do here. Um, I'd say probably closest is what you're looking for. But if we just grab this, and then uh, you can see as I'm mousing over these different points, um, well, this is kind of a bad example. Uh, if we just grab, move that along the X. Let's see if we can grab it uh, and snap that in. So if I just G, you can see it's moving around, and then if I mouse over that corner, you can see it begins to uh, snap to it. And if I mouse over that corner, uh, basically it's trying to choose the shortest path to get to that. 
So if, even if I went with that corner, it wouldn't necessarily flip to the other side. Same with this corner. It's moving from here to whatever is the closest point. So uh, that is valid on this mesh and that mesh. So that's the vertex snap. And then it's basically the same thing with the edge snap. If we just grab, you can see we can snap uh, straight to that edge, but we get to move up and down. You can see it's flipping right about at the halfway point there. Um, so that's how we can easily uh, snap to somewhere along the edge there. And then uh, it should be basically the same thing for the face. So that we're moving around on that entire face. Uh, and so you can easily and quickly uh, set it to that. Now we can also do volume, which is basically snap to anything that's inside that volume. And so while these four up here are basically the same thing, they can all prove to be quite useful. I, however, find uh, the snap to vertice uh, to be the most useful for me. So as you can see, this can actually be quite useful for lining things up uh, in your model. However, I will note that sometimes uh, things like, let's just take a two cylinders, for instance, uh, and let's just say that they're straight on top of each other, um, and we grab, uh, you can see that they're not quite lining up. I'm not quite sure why they don't want to line up uh, with the vertex snap, um, but presumably there is something going on there. Uh, let's try going into edit mode and let's try grabbing, like, let's just say that ring. There you go. So now, uh, I think, oh, I don't want X. Now you can see that it's actually lining up there. So let's try uh, selecting everything. There we go. So now it's dropped on, but uh, it looks like in object mode it was having a little bit of trouble. Possibly there was something going on with where the origin of the object was. But basically uh, we can easily and quickly line things up. And then let's just say uh, we had these two selected and then we did control J and now we've got a single object. Let's just say you were combining two parts of your mesh. And I, that you've got that, you obviously want to remove the doubles. But anyway, that's just a simple example of how the uh, vertex uh, snapping uh, can be quite useful. I typically just use it in increment so that I can quickly and easily uh, drag something up, let's just say, to the plane there um, or whatever. Uh, I find it quite useful, and I hope you guys do too. So thanks very much for watching, and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Oh.